Well, we're back in session again for another uh, art E lesson here. Or if you are making this up, then of course uh, this would be you, know, you would just be doing this on your own. Um, the eighth grade advanced art project is a uh, personalized flag or banner uh, inspired by other flags we've looked at around the world. This is the finished product as it's being in progress right now. This was the design, the theory piece, or the uh, we're thinking it out phase of all of this, the planning. And these are all the various items that we're including in this so that it really says something about us. So although it is a flag or a banner, it is also a communication piece about uh, things which are important to us as artists or people, what this represents and what is important to us as uh, as just people, you know, your strengths, your weaknesses, the things you value, um, the things that you would sacrifice for. And that's what all these eight circles in the middle are about. So we're simply going to get back to work on the coloring portion of this today. Uh, this is on, by the way, 12 by 18 inch paper, but I'm going to take the opportunity to erase that now since we have uh, made it into the project pretty far. I don't see any reason to uh, continuously have that on there. And that border will be eventually dealt with anyway. Um, you would obscure that. Alright, so when I left off I was explaining and coloring in in such a way to show you to take on the larger portions of it first and then uh, working from the general to the specific. Um, it's always a good idea to have an index card or a slip sheet handy, especially when you're coloring uh, with some brighter colors like yellows that get polluted quite frequently if you're not careful with what you're doing. And uh, so I'm going to use my split sheet or my slip sheet. I'm probably going to color in Ohio here. I'm going to make that red and furthermore this information up here uh, that's all tan and my concept piece and the large mountains down here and uh, that will really really fill in a great portion of this entire piece of work and uh, so I'm looking forward to making some progress on it today. I have um, seen a number of uh, the uh, works in progress from the students so far. I've got to say I'm pretty impressed with uh, some of your interpretation of uh, of this particular piece and so keep up the good work and uh, let's uh, drive on to the finish line with this. Now I'm going to use a red orange. Red orange looks almost red and uh, you know I preserved the reds uh, for the uh, sixth graders. There's a project that we do. Uh, their design project requires the use of red, yellow, blue, black, and white. They have a very restricted color selection and uh, that red gets used up and so I'm going to reserve that red but I am going to use uh, this red orange which is a, a good color and it almost perfectly mimics red when it's not right next to regular red. Got to get that dot out of there it offends me. So, okay. Well, I'll color it. So, here we go. Let's get going. A lot of uh, artwork is this all this production stuff you got to do. Once you get started on it, you got to simply keep pushing through. Uh, now, one of the reasons I believe that you should start with the larger areas first, and this is just my belief, but it works for me, is that you see a greater um, progress quickly, and then that keeps you committed to uh, your project a lot of times. It's easy to... Uh, you know, lose the, your commitment to the project if you get stuck in details. And so, um, if you are making a painting and you have a large area of the painting that's one color, really, uh, you should probably do that all at the same time and early in the project. And that helps you to get that greater sense of completion and, and thus commitment uh, to the project as a whole. Uh, you know, uh, quick, more quickly, or as I always say more quickly, I guess is the technically proper term, but I don't necessarily want to be right all the time, but I do want to be understood, and so one of the reasons I'm an artist and an art teacher is because I, I guess I have things that I want to communicate to people, and uh, this particular project is all about that, and I've made this project numerous times before, 
However, I think this is the one of the more interesting versions of it, simply because I made it out right on the spot. Those of you that have viewed the setup video to this, I really just made it up uh, as I went along, I, and I used the worksheet as a guide to help me uh, make sure I addressed all of the requirements for the for the project. And uh, you know, I. It's just maybe I've just gotten better or I know myself better and I have better symbolism now than I used to have. Uh, but this is uh, coming along. Now red-orange really is a variation of red. It's scarlet anyway. Uh, or sometimes it's called vermilion. These are both uh, reddish-orange types of colors. And so one of the reasons I'm using red here is because uh, Scarlet is a version of red and uh, Ohio State University uh, where a lot of people that I know have gone to college and also is a fine learning institution in Ohio its colors are scarlet and gray uh, sometimes yeah, more silver recently but scarlet and gray so that is a good symbol for uh, Ohio and furthermore uh, in the 70s probably long before any of my students that are catching this were born, there was a uh, ad campaign to get people to come to Ohio, and it was called Ohio, the heart of it all, because they believed that Ohio was shaped somewhat like a heart. And uh, I would have probably agree with that, but Ohio is an important place in the United States history, and it's many presidents have come from the state of Ohio, many great inventions, come from Ohio. Uh, presidential elections are won, are won and lost in the state of Ohio many times. Uh, so it's, a, it's an important state. People undervalue it. And the more I have traveled around, the more I realize that Ohio is a pretty good place. So if you're learning this on an e-lesson, you know, then this is happening during a moment where we all can't be together in a physical classroom. And uh, I got to tell you, a lot of people, have, a lot of students, have have contacted me, and uh, we all agree that we'd rather be back in a physical classroom. There's no substitute for that type of uh, personalized interaction between people, especially in something such as making a project where you need that mediated learning experience, meaning that you need somebody that really knows how things are done to help guide you so when you make mistakes they've got ideas to help you correct them or if you don't make mistakes they're there to encourage you to keep doing things properly uh, so uh, mediated learning is one of the most powerful methods for learning and it's very difficult to duplicate that type of interaction if you are not in person with each other and so um, and it, it that type of learning, mediated learning experience, is uh, how people learn to cook. It's how people learn to do uh, carpentry and many of these uh, skills that are very important in our world. Uh, people didn't read them out of a book. And people were taught these things by somebody else who would be uh, an expert in the field. So um, it's difficult to duplicate that but this is pretty close and so if we were in the physical classroom together right now um, I would be having very much the very same interaction with you I've got right now as we colored in our projects and I, I like to do the projects along with the students so that they uh, can see me solve problems as I go along and see the frustrations that I may also encounter uh, I finally broke my pencil lead the other day. I've been on these 6th, 7th, and 8th grade projects and had not yet snapped off a lead. And I broke off a blue lead the other day and I was really, really disappointed about that. Um, and I know it may be hard to distinguish that in my voice, but look, uh, you know, I really feel strongly about taking care of the colored pencils and uh, that really bothered me. So I'm going to try to be uh, kinder to the pencils and help them do their job better by uh, not getting too greedy with the sharpening. Because if you do that, that's when you start 
snapping off the points. So you just got to have that nice working tip that you get on there so that you can uh, color with it and still get some level of accuracy as you uh, work through the project. So it's all learning, mediated learning and trial and error learning. That's also art is a great deal of that. Uh, somebody may try to teach you how to do something and you may try to do it a different way only to find out that there was a reason they were trying to teach you to do it one way. Uh, but some people will uh, it's hard for them to learn any other way except through trial and error and uh, that is also a powerful learning tool as well. Uh, sometimes you learn things on the very first try. We call that one trial learning. Uh, and so uh, one time when I was a child I was at my aunt and uncle's house and uh, I was playing out in their yard. They really didn't have a yard yet by the way. It was just a big rocky field with a lot of dirt and rocks. And so I was out playing in their dirt and rock field yard and there was a playground ball laying in the middle of it. And so I picked up a rock and I threw it over at the playground ball. And then I got a really good idea. I thought I'd go over there where the playground ball was. And I picked up the sharpest, hardest, most angular rock, you know, a rock that would be good for, you know, throwing at a playground ball. And I threw that rock so hard at that playground ball. I thought it would pop it, but what it really did was it came straight back and hit me in the mouth uh, instantaneously. And uh, you know what I learned? That you shouldn't do that. And I only had to do that one time to figure that out. <laughs> so, one trial learning is pretty, uh, is pretty uh, powerful too. It means you had a very, very, uh, a very impressive experience with something the very first time and you learn something from that. It's kind of like falling down the steps and then you realize you better hold that handrail. Alright, so the state of Ohio is making great progress here. And that scarlet or vermilion red is bright. Now let me tell you, saturated, highly opaque. So, uh, not much going on in the video studio this morning. It's kind of dark outside. Would have been a good day to sleep. But it is. Education marches on. Yeah, okay, so. Now, some of these little. unique little curves down here along the river of the state. the rivers that make up the state of Ohio here. Some of them are fantastic rivers, like the Nongahela, the, the Allegheny River, I think, is one of these. The Ohio River, of course. The, let's see, which is the one down in Marietta? It's called the... Uh, hmm, I'd have to think about that. That's one of the oldest settlements in the United States. Marietta, Ohio. Named after Marie Antoinette, strangely. A French queen who uh, had some misfortunes during the French Revolution. She was, of course, you know, married to the king, and he had some serious misfortunes also during the French Revolution. <laughs> so it was a bad time to be a king or queen during the French Revolution. However, Meanwhile, back in the United States during that period of time, somebody was founding a city on the, uh, I think it was the Ohio River, uh, Marietta, Ohio. And uh, they named it after Marie Antoinette. It's an interesting little town. Also near there, uh, just uh, maybe 45 minutes away, are... Uh, the Serpent Mound, which is an ancient, ancient place, uh, some sort of spiritual uh, artifact of some sort or another that the ancient prehistoric uh, Indians, the Adena people, uh, built these mounds. 
and uh, one of them is the uh, serpent mound. And if you uh, were to fly a drone over it, you would see that it is a it's shaped like a snake and it slithers back and forth and then of course the snake is eating and consuming an egg and that's a mound as well and so it's really really ancient site fascinating stuff to see uh, I've never literally been there and I've lived in Ohio almost my entire life and uh, so maybe you know that's something uh, if we can't get out and uh, be with each other a lot of times or be in each other's presence maybe we can uh, go and check out some of these things that are really not very far from us and are, you know, really important world historical uh, sites as well. Now on the projection screen as I'm seeing this, this looks, this is all very glossy in here if I could hold it down. you So it looks glossy but it's totally opaque and that's just the uh, color shining the waxing material, the colored pencil, but I, from where I look at it personally, uh, it's really quite attractive. So uh, there is uh, not any opacity issues. It's simply uh, the you know, I don't know what's going on right there. It's really bugging me. I wonder if I can color that down. Okay, uh, so I'm going to keep at this. So the projector and the camera are working together here to uh, alter our colors a little bit. Uh, and also the waxy surface of the colored pencil is really quite shiny and it um, reflects a lot of light. There is a light on uh, above the camera, so we get a clearer view here. Okay, now let's keep on doing this along Lake Erie here. Lake Erie's kind of, has turned into a sportsman's paradise. When I was a child, it had problems. Lake Erie was uh, polluted and chemical companies were dumping all kinds of pollutants into the lake and you couldn't even eat the fish that came out of the lake back when I was a child and you'd go there and there'd just be dead fish floating around on the beaches and so in the 70s and 80s we started a cleanup campaign of Lake Erie and now it's a beautiful sportsman's paradise up there the beaches are nice it's really uh, quite beautiful now yeah, so kind of doesn't remind me of a place with dead fish anymore whenever I've been there in the last few years. And as in the military, there is a military encampment, Camp Perry, uh, which is up on uh, Lake Erie somewhere near Sandusky, Fort Clinton, Ohio. It's a nuclear power plant also up there that may still be in operation. Lots of deer at Camp Perry, that's all I know. We'd go up there and, and drive around in our dump trucks and dig holes in the woods and do maneuvers. All right, that looks fantastico, I believe. So Ohio, the heart of it all. Remember that, that was an ad campaign from the 70s and 80s. All right, so I'm moving on to some tan and then I gotta get down here and do these mountains. I'm still debating on what to do over in here. In my uh, picture on my design piece, it shows this as yellow and it shows this as tan. So I may just stick with that. Sometimes, you know, it doesn't help to outwit your own self. All right, I'm finding a tan colored pencil if I can. Here it is. So if you're keeping up with the same level of progress that I'm achieving here, uh, that's pretty pointy, um, you're doing a good job. Uh, I'm working as fast as I can and still getting good and try to get good results. Uh, I really uh, would rather see people work slow and get good results than to work fast and get just haphazard, reckless results. But then that puts the pressure on you as a student to continuously make the work and although I am talking while I'm working I'm still working and I guess that's the biggest impediment for most students is that they have friends in a class and that's perfectly fine and they want to talk to their friends in this class and that's also not a problem with me but they both stop working when they begin talking so if you can continuously talk and work and not disturb the work of somebody else well then that's okay but sometimes it gets really loud in the classroom where it should be 
really relatively quiet. You should be able to hear the sound of the pencil scrubbing over the paper and such. So, but I like activity in the classroom too. So it's it's a good thing to be able to have a physical activity, which is this coloring and you know, uh, periodically we got to get our folders and stuff out, and all of these physical movements and activities uh, really can focus your mind. And so it's a lot like any repetitive, long-term focus activity. It really is good for your your mental uh, functioning, and it really sharpens your mind. Plus, it teaches you to have a long attention span. Now some people are easily distracted and if you are easily distracted and you know that about yourself and you might notice it after a while, people keep saying, hey, get back to work, don't be so easily distracted, then you might need to isolate yourself so that you can work undisturbed and I would certainly um, consider that as, the, as a teacher in the physical classroom. Uh, but while you're taking e-lessons, or if you're doing this lesson as a makeup, well then you need to uh, probably maybe spend some alone time so that you can focus on your work and not be disturbed by others. Uh, I paint frequently, and one of my friends, and this was years ago at this point, had moved back to Ohio from Michigan and I just happened to be painting some paintings at the time. And he asked if he could sit there and just watch me paint because he had seen painting shows, but he had never seen a painting made in person. And so I said, sure. But it really, uh, it was a little difficult for me to do that because I was constantly trying to explain to him what I was doing. And then periodically he would ask questions about what I was doing. And uh, so it was. Uh, it seemed to be a little bit disruptive, but uh, I think it was instructive. How does that? That sounds disruptive, but instructive. So that kind of rhymes. Huh. Okay. Now, so we're making good progress here on this dreary day outside. It's really cold and rainy and windy. I hope everybody got some yard work done here recently. I know I did. Alright, I'm moving on here. This tan looks really good. When you're staring at these super saturated colors sometimes, man, it is it really gets in your eyes. Okay, I'm going to just continue to move on. I had to step back and take a look at the piece of artwork. And I gotta say, it's coming along pretty nicely here. So, always going after the large areas, I just think, is, from a, a production standpoint, is a good idea. Now, there are areas up here that are really little details, and that those little details sometimes have to be addressed, or they get forgotten. So, where you have little scraps of the uh, previous color showing through, or peeking around the corner, or partially obscured, it's good to take time to do that because uh, you can really inadvertently put the wrong color choice in there at a later time if you're not real careful. And you know, by the way, you got the proper pencil in your hand anyway, so it's good to just keep at that. All right, uh, right here is another one. It's a little bit larger. But when you tuck these colors right up next to your drawing lines, everything really starts to emerge from that background. And that opaque uh, method here, you know, trying to get all of the little specks of white out, is also quite powerful as far as the saturation of the color goes. It really makes things separate from. Uh, pretty good here. Alright, and these two colors right up next to each other really look pretty good. This blue and this tan, i got to say I was not expecting that, but uh, 
tan is a variation of brown, and brown does contain orange, and as a result of that, orange is the opposite of blue, so I guess it would make some sense that from a theoretical standpoint. Okay, uh, now the large area right here, the Lake Erie, state of Ohio. Alright, so it won't be long until this project will be ready for grading and uh, we will, uh, there will be a video on how to grade artwork. Normally in the physical classroom, uh, if we had to grade artwork, we would spend a class period doing that and you would grade it and I would grade it and everybody would, uh, you know, at least have some level of agreement on what it is uh, that the, you know, the grade should be on that piece of artwork. I'm going to go ahead and tape this corner down because it's driving me nuts. And right here as well. So, okay, now I think I'm back in business here. So there will be a an instructional video on how to do the uh, grading, uh, and then of course, uh, if you're an E student, if you're using this as an E lesson, then you will uh, just take a photograph of it and the photograph of your grading form, and take a photograph of the project and then you simply email that to me and I'm able to see what you've done and I'm able to uh, see how you've assessed it and I will either agree or or not agree with that I may change your grade sometimes I raise it sometimes I lower it sometimes I just accept it the way it is uh, so that's uh, how we're going to grade art now if we were in a physical classroom we'd spend a whole period doing this and uh, I would go around and tell you why I either raised or lowered your grade and it would be much easier that way. However, and that's not as a physical classroom right now, uh, if you were doing this as a makeup project, for whatever reason, then you would simply give me the project when you're done with it and I would grade it myself. And then that's whatever grade you would get if you were making it up. Because we can't really spend a great deal of group instruction time uh, you know, grading one individual student's artwork. So, uh, in the larger world of art, in high school and definitely in college, uh, when you have grading days happen, they're called critiques. And you spend a lot of time. Everybody that day has to have all their artwork done and set up and ready for ready for uh, criticism from the teacher or the uh, your colleagues, uh, your fellow students if you're a student and uh, it's really bad news not having your stuff done on critique day so uh, it's, it's you wouldn't think that you know art would be that way, that there would be that much stress but uh, I had friends who were engineering students in college and they uh, said I spent more time stressing out over art projects than they ever did about engineering labs and engineering math problems and because they just had to understand things they didn't necessarily have to make anything as a product to show that they understood it and so that's what's different about visual art is that the product is the proof of your understanding Whereas it's like a test if you're in a mathematically inclined field of some sort, like engineering or, or physics. And nothing says stuff about you like an art project. It's a real reflection on your work habits. And, you know, more than anything, uh, when you are in an art class, especially at the high school and college and beyond level, you want the respect of the other art artist in that class. You want them to value your opinion and not just say, this person doesn't even know what he's talking about. He can't make art. I've watched him do it. He's never completed a project ever. So uh, if you want people to respect and value your opinion as an artist and your ideas, which is very important, especially if you're a teacher, then you have to be able to produce the work that you're asking them to do and in this case I, I do my best to do that and also to demonstrate the techniques uh, that I uh, require of my students 
Okay, now I'm hoping that's all in focus. I'm going to focus this briefly. Okay, maybe that's a little bit better. Um, and I'm just going to continue on. This tan is taking a long time. And staring at this from close range is also, when you look at saturated colors for long periods of time, and that's exactly what we're doing here. And also under artificial light, it really can mess with your vision. So you start wondering if stuff is really in focus or not. And also you get eye fatigue from uh, staring at or carefully, you know, looking at things. If you were like a seamstress or a tailor and you had to uh, constantly look at close range while you sewed uh, clothing or uh, curtains, all of that very close, careful visual inspection makes your eyes tired. Uh, the, the muscles in your eyes that are responsible for focusing your vision. And so it's funny that you would think that you don't need to condition those, just like you know, weightlifting for your for your eyes, but you do. And uh, the longer you're able to continue to work, what happens is the muscles in your eyes get stronger as well. But when it comes a time everybody's muscles wear out, and that's when if you can't see it good, you should probably step away from it for a while, and. Uh, you know, look at something else, like a, like anything else. <laughs> but the saturated colors, is, uh, if you, when you're making a painting, it's really a bit overwhelming sometimes to have uh, these super saturated colors, especially at a large scale, uh, right in front of your face, and uh, then trying to uh, accurately paint with small brushes sometimes is a real nightmare. Okay, but in this case, no nightmare just lots of tan. So I'm trying to vary my color, coloring strike, so that I don't end up with uh, any sort of strange pattern developing in there and addressing little skip overs as I go along. All right. So I hope your project is coming along like mine. I'm really very pleased with this right now. Um, although I've had some projects go horribly wrong, even though they had a good start. But, and these are long attention span operations we've got going here because that's part of what we do, our learning targets. If you're in the physical classroom, I'd constantly be pointing out to you that our learning targets are understanding, application, and, and success. I would always be pushing that. What are we trying to do? We're trying to understand the basic concepts of design. We're trying to apply those concepts in a project and we're going to succeed on an evaluation of those projects and that knowledge through the use of quizzes and uh, project grading. And so that is how we address that. So in the physical classroom all of these things are posted for you to see uh, very clearly and it's a kind of a different operation when you're either making this lesson up or you are uh, doing this as an e-lesson. Okay, now this is very unusual. There is this tiny, tiny scrap of this stripe passing behind here. And it's so tiny that I have to be very careful not to cover over it or it will make a what we call a logic flaw. So if I want it passing under that, I have to leave that little mark there because it lines up with this mark here and here. Huh. So tight, close inspection reveals things like this to you. You can't just get haphazard and then it's very difficult to fix these things sometimes when you have them totally colored opaquely. Alright, this is looking pretty good and according to my worksheet I'm just going to continue on with this tan. I think I'm going to wear this one all the way out it looks like. So over here this will all be tan as well. Although I'm half tempted to extend this line and make this section over here in that cerulean blue. So I might just do that and that, what, oh, but then this is supposed to be yellow, but that could be blue also, couldn't it? Hmm. I think I'll do that. Especially since I'm thinking about it and I've made some good decisions recently here, so I'll level that out. Okay. Ooh, 
hey, what is that? That means that's the end of our period right now. Um, and let's see, this one right here is completely obscured, so I don't have to do anything there. So I'm going to extend that blue into there. Um, however, I'm going to continue working on this for this particular session. And then when we get back next time, I'm going to do the mountains and the stripe. And then we're back, to, we're on to details. So let's keep at this. I do like that uh, blue stripe, though, we're kind of floating through the entire uh, operation there. It kind of does give it a bit of continuity. And the tan looks good against it, too. So I call, I'm going to call that a good choice. Uh, let's see, I need to get over in here. So when that bell goes off, I set it for right before I start the video. I set it for 38 minutes. And so a real class uh, will be between, you know, depending on the schedule, 43 to uh, 53 minutes, depending on uh, what kind of schedule we're running at the school. So 38 minutes is pretty good production time for 8th graders. I think it's not too much for an 8th grader to pay attention that long. And by the time I'm done with this video, it will actually be probably more like 41 minutes. So by the time you get your stuff out and get it set up, and then you work for about 41 minutes, and then you put everything away, and then the bell rings at school, and you leave and go to your next class. That's kind of what we're trying to duplicate here. And as you can see, these projects are being done in real time. So you're simply watching me make the project. I'm not using any sort of video studio magic to make this appear. I'm doing it exactly the way that you would do it. And uh, I've seen some photographs of your work, some of you out there, and I'm kind of impressed. Uh, and uh, people are approaching this different ways. But And one student, I saw that she actually did put in these chevrons, all of those, and she made a circle too, but she turned it into pizza slices. Uh, and that's how she put all of her interest in there, each, each slice of pizza, and one of them was, of course, a piece of pizza, uh, was a very inventive uh, way to do that. And so, you know, students come up with, even though they may be using an idea that I initiated, they take it to a whole different level. So that's what we call creativity, is when you can solve a problem, the same old problem, with a new and different, a novel way. And uh, that's how progress is made in the arts, is through people coming up with new and different ways to see things, new and different ways to interpret them and communicate them. And so I was very impressed with that approach, so how she got her eight interests that are important to her in there and then also was able to put it together in a novel manner which is the pizzas so anyway I thought that was brilliant so I, I see a lot of uh, students interpret these projects they kinda go with the setup that maybe I put it put out and